thinking about why are we putting things in hermetically sealed containers? Well, we're really worried about making sure that we're extending the shelf life as long as possible and reducing spoilage opportunities while also protecting against pathogens. Now, it's important to think about hurdle technology. What are the different interventions that you're doing when doing some sort of hermetically sealed package? Because again, you could be intervening on multiple different steps. Think back to Fat Tom, food, acid, time, temperature, oxygen, or moisture. And so each of these interventions, if done in a small way, but in an additive way, can have a bigger effect on your product. So thinking about you could have, you could just cook your product to death, but if you were to cook your product plus make sure that you've got water activity or pH in your favor, then absolutely you may be getting a better impact in terms of reducing spoilage or reducing the presence of pathogens within your product. So let's play a little bit of a game here and I'm gonna introduce some products and let's think them through together. So we got a little UHT milk here. UHT, of course, meaning ultra high temperature pasteurization. So it's a very high temperature for a very short time. What do we know about its pathogens? E. coli is our priority pathogen in milk products. Um, are there indicator organisms? And again, you should have covered this in your microbiology class. If you haven't, please come and talk to me. Um, so what is UHT pasteurization? This is 135 degrees Celsius for approximately one to two seconds. And again, because milk is a neutral pH product and it's a very high water activity product, you wanna make sure that you're using a very effective time temperature protocol to get this under control. It's aseptically filled because again, it's a plastic container and these containers are not heat resistant. So it's going in an environment where the air quality is controlled and the packaging going in is sterilized so that everything is sterile going into that package. No preservatives and no water activity or microbial control, but it is a shelf stable product. And in general, you can leave these things out on the counter for an extended period without any spoilage issues. How about jam? We talked about jam in one of our previous discussions, but Again, we've got in a jam product a lot of microbial control from water activity control from the sugar, pH control, and in many cases a time temperature uh, protocol because we're heating it extensively. It's a very hot product and it's hot filled and often tunnel pasteurized or steam pasteurized after to make sure that we've got really strong control. Do we have priority pathogens in jam? Not to my knowledge but we do have indicator organisms and that would include aspergillus mold, which can, can commonly grow in um, uh, low water activity products. So again, it's an, it's an osmophilic mold. If you've ever made jam and you've seen that spot of mold on the top, that's likely aspergillus. So this is typically hot filled, but sometimes it's steam pasteurized or tunnel pasteurized after to make sure that there's a double control. Water activity is controlled from sugar and you got pH that's quite acidic in this product. Some jams are going to contain an antimicrobial and antifungal. Potassium sorbate is a very effective antifungal agent. But again, with more clean label products, potassium sorbate is not a clean label ingredient. How about tomato sauce? What do we know about this? Unlike our jam, we don't have a water activity control, but we've got acidity, we've got time temperature protocol, and so it's one where in this case, some of it's similar, but some of it's not quite. What's a priority pathogen? Salmonella has been found in fresh tomato products. And so unfortunately, fortunately, salmonella is quite easy to knock down with time and temperature. Indicator organism, Bacillus coagulans, it is a spore former. And so it is one where you do need to make sure that your pH is in control and you have sufficient time temperature protocol for preventing spoilage on this product. It is typically a hot fill but often tunnel pasteurized or steam pasteurized after to make sure that there's good microbial control from time and temperature. Tomato sauce has no water activity control. It has a very high water activity. The acid on tomato sauce is borderline and so in many cases they will acidify this product with citric acid Sometimes lower quality products, again, are using non-clean label ingredients to control antimicrobial. Oh, snack pack. This is a milk-based product. So we are thinking about neutral pH, 
We also see it's a plastic container, and so we're thinking aseptic fill. And so, again, there may be some water activity reduction, likely not very much, because again, kids love sugary sweet treats, but parents don't, and we see more and more formulation considerations away from high levels of sugar where you'd get your water activity control. So again, this is going to be aseptically filled, so heated up to 135 Celsius for one or two seconds, cooled down using a heat exchanger, and then injected into the package in an aseptic environment into sterilized packaging. Some of these do contain antimicrobials, some of the lower quality products. Oh, it's a bottle of wine. What do we know about wine? Think about it. Alcohol is antimicrobial. If you did microlab, you sprayed alcohol on your bench to clean it up, get rid of a bacterial load. So the thing is though, bacteria can still thrive in an alcohol environment. Acetobacter, for example, is a bacteria that quite uh, enjoys alcohol and will ferment it to acetic acid. So most winemakers are adding additional sulfites often as potassium metabisulfite or um, sodium metabisulfite and it's it's added as an antimicrobial agent at low parts per million levels but it is very effective. Some of the winemakers are using microfiltration but again think about it from a process control perspective if your bottle's not clean microfiltration is not going to be effective so you have to have both microfiltration on your product and some sort of sterilization on your bottle if you're going that route as your primary control in wine your pH is good your water activity is not going to help you this is milk but it's not just pasteurized using high temperature short time it is actually finely filtered Water activity and pH is no help in milk. We can't add my antimicrobials to milk because we have a standardized entity for milk products in Canada. Traditionally, milk is high temperature short time, which is 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. Back in the old day, they used to vat pasteurize it using big tanks, and they'd hold it at 65 for 15 minutes. In one of our future slide or shows, we'll talk about why these different time temperature combinations. In this case, they're using microfiltration. They have to remove the fat by centrifugation. They can then filter the milk to get rid of bacteria, and then they add the fat back. But the fat has been um, heat pasteurized to make sure that it has uh, had a microbial treatment, and then they homogenize it to emulsify the fat back into the milk product. Just for reference, this is a great textbook for you if you are interested in learning more about dairy processing. Oh, this one, chicken soup. pH and water activity is not a help at all. No antimicrobials. This is going to be retort processed. And this will be one of our future slideshows talking about what is a retort process. And here's a video that you can watch to learn a little bit more and whet your appetite for some retort processing. Take care. Talk to you soon.